Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. I believe you papered this room. I did? Just followed one of those how-to-do-it books. Fred didn't help you? Lately, he's had nagging backache with sleepless nights and feels worn out. A person doesn't feel up to much with backache. Better tell him to try Don't Pill. Good advice. That Don't Pill's an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidney. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains, may come on with overexertion, emotional upset, or everyday stress and strain. Doom's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable, with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doom's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doom's pills today. To save money, buy Doan's big economy size. You going out soon, Mr. Jones? Yeah, it's a little early yet, Chester, and things seem quiet enough. But why do you ask? Well, sir, I thought I might read your thoughts up a little bit when you go. That's nice. Well, now, night wasn't made just for sleeping. That's what my mommy used to tell us. You know, Chester, I'll bet you a dollar to a dime it was your father who said that. My papa? Mm -hmm. Of course it was. Did I say my mama? (laughs) Well, I sure never meant that. My goodness alive, no. She didn't even do nothing after dark except reading the Bible. And out loud. That did you no harm. Anyway, you've more than made up for it. Well, Mr. Dillon... I ain't such a wild one as all that. I don't know, Chester. Every now and then you've got a look in your eye that spells trouble for some pretty girl somewhere. <laughs> now, that is pure talk to you. Pure talk. Yeah, it was close by. Come on. Yonder. Right in the street there, Pete. Yeah, I see him. There's nobody else around. Take a look down the alley. <laughs> Dane Shaw. Dane. Danny, you bet hurt. Shot me right in the back, Marshal. Must have been in the alley there. One of you men go find Doc, huh? Any idea who it was, Dane? No, sir. None at all. I, I ain't got an enemy in the world. I know. Huh? Yeah, I know. But has anybody, anybody at all said anything lately or done anything that might have led to this? No. No. Did you see him at all? No, sir. But I did hear him say something about Stone, Marshal. That's all I heard. Stone. A man's name? (laughs) Could be. Anyway, that's all I heard. Maybe he thought I I was somebody called Stone. I don't know. Well, I don't know no Stone. Not around here, anyway. No. (laughs) Do you, Dane? No, I don't. All right. A uh, couple of you men, get him up to Doc. Huh? Oh, 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 oh. Come on, Chester. Come on. Yeah, Dave's such a nice, peaceable fellow. It's a downright chain, that's what it is. Uh, you want some more coffee? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Now that he's right, Chester, he got shot by mistake. Mm-hmm. How come you're so sure? Well, his hat, for one thing. 
Yeah, it's the same shape and the same color as mine. Yes? Uh, and Dane and I are built enough alike. We're close enough in size that somebody could possibly make a mistake. Especially at night. What is so? Maybe, but that stretch just don't cast me. Except for one thing. I once knew a man named Stone. You knew him? You mean he's dead? Mm-hmm. Well, but if he's dead, then it couldn't have been him. Stone had a friend called Danch. Might have been Danch. Why? Now, they were both cow thieves down in Matagorda County, it was. One day, Danch found his friend Stone hung from a live oak tree. Now, I haven't seen Danch since that event, but I heard that he's often sworn publicly that he's going to kill me for it. Did you... No, Chester. Probably some cattlemen caught him using a straight iron and practiced a little quick justice. I wasn't even around. Uh-huh. I don't hang people. Anyway, if it was Dan, she's probably still in Dodge. He'd have heard he shot the wrong man soon enough. Were you going to look for him? Well, it's better than letting him look for me. Especially seeing the way he goes about it. Well, uh, what's he look like? In case I see him first. Ah, he's tall, thin... That one mark you can't miss if you're standing on his left side, anyway. What's that? He had a fight somewhere. He got his ear chewed off. Well, unless he's growing another, that ought to make him easy enough to spot. I might warn around and see if he's been out of the Dodge house, ain't it, Joe? All right, Chester. I'm going to make a round of the saloons. I'll be at the Long Branch last. Yes, sir. <laughs> No, not tonight, Kitty. Hmm? They must be expecting trouble. Maybe. Have you heard the name Dance around here lately? Dance? Hmm? No, no, I haven't. What's he look like? He's a tall man, missing an ear. Oh, yeah. I saw a fellow like that a couple of nights ago. He's in here real late. Is that so? You haven't seen him since? No. I could ask the other girl. Uh, Miss Dillon? Oh, hello, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. Uh, Miss Dillon, you know that cheap rooming house in the edge of town, the one they call the Prairie Dog Hole? Yeah, what about it? Uh, well, sir, I went to every other place, and then I tied it just on a tent, and sure enough, he was there. You mean you saw him? No, he's gone. They said he rode in after dark last night, and he left one gone. He hasn't been back since, and took his horse with him. Oh. So maybe it wasn't him after all, huh? Yeah, maybe not, Chester. I think I'll keep sniffing the air just the same. The next afternoon about sundown, Dane Shaw suddenly died. He hadn't been badly hurt, but as Doc said, you never know how a man's heart will react. Anyway, Dane, a man without an enemy in the world, was dead, murdered. In a place of me. That night I was walking down Front Street thinking about it and wondering why it's the innocent that so often get hurt when... Well, at once I had a feeling I was being followed. I walked on until I reached an alley and then I turned into it casually... Once out of sight, I ran halfway down it and ducked behind a rain barrel and waited. And a few seconds later, I knew I'd been right. Don't kill me. Don't kill me, Marshal. Well, that depends on you, Miss Senor. Get up. You got my gun. I went on. You went off when you jumped me, that's all. Shut up and turn around. Yeah. Okay. Jill's right around the corner. Walk ahead of me and walk careful. I will. Sure I will. That's it. Now open the door and go right on in. Sure. Marshal. Well, I declare who it is, Miss Dillon. I don't know. Who are you, mister? My name's Lee. Lee what? Bill Lee. All right, Lee, now, when did you follow me down that alley with a gun in your hand? I wasn't following you, Marshal. Oh, what were you doing? Well, I was just... 
We, it was dark down there, and I didn't want to take any chances. All right, Lee. Did you shoot Dane Shaw last night? Now, you... Look here, Marshal. You can't drag me in here and accuse me of... Shut up. All I want out of you is one thing. Did Dan hire you to kill me? You got nothing on me, Marshal. I never heard of no dang. All right, lock him up, Chester. Lock me up? What for? A lion. Now, wait a minute. I see Lee. It sure is. No, I'm, I'm, I mean, you can't put me in jail. You show him what we can do, Chester. All right, sir. All right, mister. Right through that door. Go on. I uh, see you try for this, Marshal. I know my right. The only right you've got left is to be hung, and I hope it takes place real soon. <laughs> Every morning, Chester brought Lee out of his cell, and I questioned him, but he admitted nothing day after day. We kept him in jail anyway, and I hoped Dan should hear of it and come into town to do the job himself. But it isn't a good feeling to walk down the street and know that any minute you might get shot in the back. And finally, I got tired of it. I wanted to know where Dan was. You're wasting your time, Marshal. Look, for the last time, are you going to tell me where Danch is? I've told you a hundred times I don't know Danch. Why do you make his deal with you? I don't know nothing about no deal. I'm an innocent man, Marshal, and as soon as I get out of here, I'm going to write the government about it. Tell me, Lee, how does it feel to kill a man for money? Well, don't you look at me, Marshal. Nobody's paid me nothing. Well, what about you? You get paid for shooting people... You get paid regular for it. Me? I think I'll hit you right on the head and drag you back to your cell right there. Sure, sure. I'm not Wait a minute, Chester. Let him be. Oh, that's that kind of obvious me, key boy. I know, but I got a better idea of what to do with him. What? I'm not getting anywhere this way. Lee just isn't going to tell us anything. He's got his mind made up. I don't know anything I told you. So keeping him locked up isn't going to help turn him loose. Oh, no. Now, Mr. Yeah, Well, well, it's about time. Now, you can't do that. He'll just try to kill you again for a chance to get All right, go on, Lee. You're free. Get out of here. You really mean it, Marshal? You heard me. There's your gun. Take it. Don't pick it up by the butt. Oh, I no, I wouldn't try nothing, Marshal. You'd die if you did. You're not fast enough to kill me face to face. No, and I wouldn't try. Now, goodbye, Marshal Chester. I'm leaving. I'm taking the next train to Abilene. I'll leave. Yeah. There's just one thing. What? You said I get paid for shooting people. Oh, no, Marshal, I didn't mean nothing. No, in a way, you're right. Sometimes I have to when there's no other way out. But I won't get paid for shooting you. What? Now I figure killing you will be part pleasure and part self-defense. Well, what are you talking about, Marshal? Just that. Yeah, but why do you want to shoot me? I don't like men of your kind. Well, Marshal, you can't... I can't let you get any farther than that boardwalk. I'd be a fool if I did. Now, you go on out the door, Lee, and I'm coming right after you. No, no. I'll feel a lot safer with you, Dad. Go on. No, I'm staying right here. And I'll kill you right here. You're armed? No. I'll give you my gun. Now, touch it. Don't, don't kill me, Marshal. Don't kill me. I'll tell you. I'll tell you anything you want. It's too late. You'll probably lie anyway. Oh, no. No, Marshal. No, I won't. I... You listen to me. Danch is down the Santa Fe Trail about 75 miles across the Cimarron, a place called Wagon Bed Springs. He is. Sir. He's waiting there for me. He's waiting to pay me when, when I... When you kill me, is that right? I'm not going to kill you, Marshal. No, I... Take his gun, Chester, before he changes his mind. He's a pretty brave man. Sure, sure. You can take it. <laughs> there he is, Dylan. I told you. You let me go now, You know, Dad huh? isn't going to like you having killed the wrong man and me still walking around in good health, Lee. And the law wouldn't like it if I turned a murderer loose. So lock him up, Chester, and then get the horses. You know the way, Lee. <laughs> Bed Springs boasted a hotel with a half a dozen rooms, a restaurant, and two saloons all built out of Adobe. It was just a stopping point for bullwhackers and mule skinners driving their freight wagons along the Santa Fe Trail. When night came, Chester and I rode in, found a corral for our horses, and scouted the town. Dance wasn't anywhere in sight, so I decided to begin asking questions. Here. Same for me. Strangers, ain't he? 
Yeah, we're supposed to meet a friend here. Well, yeah, look around, Mr. I have. I can't find him. If he's in Wagon Bed Springs, you can find him. This ain't a big town like Dodge and them places. I wish it was. You know, I'd like to see Dodge sometime. Well, that's where my friend may have gone, but maybe you saw him when he passed through here. A tall man, one ear. Oh? That calls himself Dance. Well, sure, I know him. He, he was here quite a while. But he left just yesterday. He, he's gone to Texas and sure not died. That's so? He tell you that? Well, that's what he said when he left. Uh, all right, thanks. Sure. He staying here long? No, not long. Uh, here's for the beer. We'll be back soon as we eat. Good. Did you need it in there, Mr. Miller? Are we really going to eat supper again? Tested that barkeep said he'd never seen Dodge. He was there last fall. I remember his face. Well, if he was in Dodge, he knows who I am. Dodge is here somewhere, and that barkeep's going to get word to him mighty fast. Now, come on, let's get across the street. Where are we going? We'll follow him when he goes to tell Dodge I'm here. He'll leave as soon as he thinks we're in our restaurant. All right, he won't see us here. Can I go with you? If you stay out of the way. Oh, I will. I'd figured it right. And in a few minutes, the barkeep came out onto the street and walked down toward the edge of town. We followed some distance behind until he reached a small adobe hut. And there he knocked and then disappeared inside. The hut had no windows we could see, but I sent Chester around back to make sure. He returned in a moment, and I told him to wait while I went up to the door. Who is it? You're trapped, Dash. Come out with your hands up. I didn't see. He said he had to go. I ought to. got nothing to do with it. I'm getting out of here. Go on. Go on, here. Marshal, I'm coming out. I ain't your heart, so don't shoot. Okay, come on. Get out. You got a bit more than that. I can't get out. All right, keep your hands up. Chester. Sure, sure. I'll take him. Keep an eye on him. Come on, you. I won't do anything. He paid me to warn him, that's all. You're in a bad spot, Dad. You can rot in there. I don't suppose you've been in a fight in current and the morning you get stone walked up. I was in Galveston when stone got hung. That's down. a lie. That doesn't matter. I come here hired Lee to shoot me. You lost your nerve? Too many cattlemen and dogs is why. Yeah. I forgot your reputation with cows. And I don't care how you die anyway. You talk big for a man who's practically buried. I'm coming out, Dylan. I found out with a gun. Don't do it, Dutch. I'll have to kill you. I hang anyway, and I just might get you. I backed off around the corner of the hut and waited. Dutch opened the door wide, and then suddenly he sprang out, a gun ready in each hand, expecting to face me. He stood there for a second before he realized he'd been trapped again. And then he made his choice and started to the corner of the hut where I was. Did you know? Okay, Chester. Is he dead? Yeah. Well, he tried to kill you, Marshal. It was self-defense, pure and simple. Shut up. What do we do with this man, Mr. Dillon? Let him go, Chester. He's just scum. All right. Bury him, mister. Eat page Yes, sir. I'll take care of it. If I ever see you in Dodge, you'll go to jail. Oh, no, sir. I, I, I wouldn't come to Come you. on, Chester. Let's get out of here. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. 
reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. Hi, this is Dennis James to explain why Kellogg's Way is the reliable way to get the effectiveness you want from brand with just half a cup a day. The Kellogg's All Brand is the real Battle Creek formula, the one that millions of people depend on. And they depend on it because Kellogg's All Brand contains more vital brand bulk to help you keep regular. It's low in calories, and it's mighty pleasant eating, too. Kellogg's All Brand comes in crisp, toasted shreds that have a wholesome brand muffin taste. I think you'll like it. So be sure you remember, for the effectiveness you want from brand, get reliable Kellogg's All Brand. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, John Daner, Harry Bartell, and Lawrence Dobkin. Carly Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. One day through Friday, Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>